Shalom, all, all praises, honor, and glory go to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham Yahweh Kodash. Double honor and the apostles and elder bishops of great millstone that rule well and that taught us his truth, among many other things. Salutations to the sincere Achim out there that are out on the highways and byways waking up the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, the true Hebrew Israelites that the Bible speaks of. You know, and also, of course, that are, you know, exposing the so-called white man for what he is, you know, Esau Edom. You know, he's the number one enemy of our people. Also of the Heavenly Father, the Heavenly Father hates Esau, Edom, according to the book of uh, Romans and the book of uh, Malachi. You know, so there's many other scriptures in the book of Numbers that the Lord is going to get rid of, you know, the so-called Ashkenazi small hats. They are really the tribe of Amalek, you know. The grandson of Esau, Edom. So they are the uh, of the bloodline of Esau, which makes them, uh, which makes them, the Edomites. You know, so and even the Edomites, you know, because just like we have different tribes, Esau, Edom has their, you know, different uh, tribes. But the thing is, even the Edomites outside of the Amalekites. You know, outside of the small heads, they, you know, I hate Jews, I hate Negroes, ah, you know, so that's for a reason, especially with these uh, KKK uh, people, you know, so, but um, to all your brothers and sisters out there that have faith in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, you know, to all y'all say Shalom as well. Yeah, I wanted to go into a few things concerning, let me just jump in it. This is Second Timothy chapter one, and let me just start at seven. For Yahweh had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And also in the NLT, for the heavenly Father Yahweh has not given us the spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. You know, and a sound mind that goes into a stable mind. How do you get stable? Uh, how do you get stable is through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Shai by studying, man. You need to study yourself approved, you know. So, and to whom? To the Heavenly Father. And knowledge and wisdom shall be the what? The stability of that child. If you, if you go into Isaiah 33 and uh, 6. So, let me go into sound mind. This goes into the Greek word sophronismos. So, sophronismos. And it is an admonishing or calling to soundness of mind, to moderation and self-control. You see that? Self-control, moderation. So, that's linking um, to you having temperance. You know, it goes into discipline, which goes into diligence. You, know, you put it in, and uh, you know you're exerting, you know a certain. I I say that you put it in work. You know, self control, sound mind, and it goes to so free so free nizo, To restore to uh, to restore one to his senses. To moderate. So basically, if you are all over the place, do you need to be restored to your senses? Do you need to calm down? And how do you do that? By moderation, by self-control, you know, to curb certain anxiety or anger or, you know, things that you're dealing with. could also be um, too much uh, joking around, you know, that's also not good. You know, the spirit of jesting, all types, that's of course jokes, you know, among brethren, that is also not good. You know, there's balance to everything. You know, it's, you need to apply balance. So, uh, it goes to disciple, which goes into um, a student. You know, and the student needs to do what? Pay attention. Uh, pay attention. And for that, um, if you want to get understanding, you need to have discipline and cut certain things off that distract you from 
reaching your goals when it comes to you know this truth. So to hold one to his duty, to admonish, to exhort earnestly, so to discipline or to correct, to make of sound mind, just to selectively read, teach to be sober, you know, you're having that uh, um, discipline and self-control. Doesn't have to necess necessarily mean, um, you know, that you should not be drinking, you know, so... Because let me go to the far legs concerning that. Sober. Let me see what it says. Sober, not intoxicated. So that's the uh, effect by, you know, if you take take a look at uh, alcohol or drugs. And here you see it, abstaining from habitual. Uh, this goes also in the same thing. Straightforward and serious, not exaggerated, emotional. Or silly, you see, and that silliness goes into jesting. You know, serious or st or state in character or character or conduct. You know, so um, here you see temperate. So let me go back. So Second Timothy one. And eight, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of Yahweh, who had saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Masayah in the anointed Yahweh Shai, he savior, he deliverer, for he shall save his people. That's what the angel told Joseph. So you shall call him name Yahweh Shai, for he shall save his people. So his name means he sa savior, he deliverer. You know, before, so which was given us in Masayah Yahweh Shai. Masayah goes into anointed, goes into uh, Christ. In the English, which goes into uh, Messiah or into anointed. So, and if you go look it up, it goes into Christos, which also goes into anointed. And let me just read this in the blue letter. Let me see. See, it goes into the Greek Christos, which is anointed in the Messiah. The son of the heavenly father. You know, so. Before the world began. So we see that. We are called. Yahweh Tzah. Yahweh also chosen man. Because many are called. But a few are chosen. Because. If you read in the scriptures. You see. That you see that people also separated themselves. And. Uh, fell out of the truth and back into the world, back, uh, you know, into perdition. Because if you are in the world, you you, you don't uh, do the things for Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai like you ought to do. Then you get the reward that comes with, you know, you being all about the world, which is, you know, you being destroyed, man. You will be rewarded according as your work shall be on the, you know, whether it be on the right side or on the left, you know, whether it be good or evil, you're going to get what you deserve. So, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Masih Yahweh before the world began. You see that? So... This is all predestination. The game is rigged, as they say in the world. And this is also, it's all uh, predestined by the Heavenly Father. He knows who are His, and He knows the ones that are going to be destroyed because of their wickedness. You know? And of course, you also have martyrs that uh, will have to die in the name of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, but they will still be entering in the Lord's rest into the kingdom. 
you know, contrary to the ones that are dying in wickedness, you know, they will die a horrible death. But even the two thirds, you know, they will come back. But, you know, the scriptures talk about that there is a hierarchy when it comes to the ones that stood stiffly for the name of Yahweh Basham Yom Shah and stood firm. And the ones, you know, in combination with that, uh, you know, that comes with faith and with works in righteousness. So you cannot expect the same reward if you don't have faith in Yahweh Basham Yom Shai. And, you know, uh, you can't expect the same reward as one that, you know, is out there really putting everything aside for the for the Lord, man, for Yahweh Basham Yom Shai. If you're out in the world doing whatever you want, then the Lord ain't going to give you the same reward as the ones that he had chosen to preach the word and to, um, you know, be all about the truth, man. Because the scriptures do talk about those who uh, find their life or seek their life uh, shall lose it. And those who lose their life for my name's sake shall find it. Because this world is the end of everything. This It's it's going to be destroyed, man. This, this rulership is going to be destroyed. So why would you fashion yourself after the likings of your enemies? You know, being carnal, not 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 giving, uh, you know, any attention to spiritual things on the right hand side. You know, not caring about Yahweh or his son Yahweh Shai, not caring about the truth, not uh, wanting to stand for the truth and having integrity. They want fast money by all means necessary. They want the things that are of the world, which, uh, you know, they can. They can just take away from you, man, if they want. They can trap you up. You know, frame you, plant something on you, and there you go. You know? So, let me go to um, some uh, precepts. Yard uh, is going to be short and to the point. Concerning the shame, because it said here, um, in verse 8, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of the Lord, of our Lord. You know, let me go into the word ashamed. It goes into, it goes into a pai shinomai, which is to be ashamed. You know, to feel shame for something, be ashamed. You see? It goes to epi. Uh, this is, let me get into this, goes into against, and it goes into Aishino, to disfigure, to dishonor, to suffuse with with shame, make ashamed, be ashamed, and on to disfigurement, i.e. disgrace, to feel shame, also in cases for oneself, be ashamed. You should not be ashamed for the gospel, man. Someone sees you teaching, so be it. You know, like the elder apostle uh, Tahar back in the days would say, like, hey, if you see your boss, you know, so what? He might even give you a raise, man. <laughs> you know? And if not, the Lord going to hook you up if you lose your job, man. Because, you know, we've been seeing uh, things like that. And the Lord always takes care of his own. You know, so strive for the truth unto death. And what? And the Lord shall fight for thee. You know, so is it uh, a pleasurable thing to go to certain situations to lose your job or your house or, you know, it's not that not, uh, doesn't have to necessarily happen to everyone that uh, is seen out there, you know, but things come into your life and happen unto you for a reason and it builds up character, you know, and it builds up your faith. And it makes you realize what you have, man. Especially when you're complaining. The Lord can get you into a situation that makes you think about the, the things that he has been doing for you that you might have taken for granted. You know, and then you start to think about, oh, man, you know, like in uh, <laughs> basically that you were tripping, man. And you repent from that. You know, so... 
So it'll be a shame for the testimony and it goes into martyrion. You see the word martyr in there. And it goes into testimony. And which goes into something evidential and evidence given or especially the, the Decalogue in the sacred tabernacle to be testified, the testimony witness. You know, it goes into martis, a witness in a legal sense, in a historical sense, one who is a spectator of anything, um, also, you know, of a, uh, e.g. of a contest, in an ethical sense, those who after his example have proved the strength and genuineness of their faith in Yahweh Shai by undergoing a violent death. That's a martyr. And Revelation, uh, I think he's going to give Revelation 20 and 4. If you go uh, down or 2 and, oh, not even. But oh, that trans, that uh, goes into uh, being a martyr. You know, if you die for uh, uh, Yahweh Basham Yahushai or in the name of Yahweh Basham Yahushai, you know, so which, um, you know, because some of you will be cast into prison, as the scriptures say, you know, be, but beat up faithful unto death, and I shall give thee a crown of life, you know, and the rev, this is a rough paraphrase of Revelation 2 and 10, but also in Revelation 20 and 4, it's, uh, you know, some of us will be uh, beheaded because they have these uh, devices out there, these uh, guillotines, and they were shipping them from left to right in all types of military equipment and vehicles. They getting ready, and now also with the MPOX, you know the WHO, you know the World Health Organization, because they bring death. Hell goes into the grave, you know. So they already, uh, you know. Are getting themselves ready, so we need to stick to Yahweh Basham Yahushai and not being ashamed of the testimony of the Lord. You know, the scriptures talk about that. Uh, you know, um, what was it? I don't want to. Let me about the testimony of the Lord is the spirit of prophecy in Revelation nineteen. Um, Verse 10, and I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, because it's talking about an angel, you know, and we should not be bound down to angels, and the angels told him, don't do that, I'm, I'm your fellow servant, you know, I also serve the Lord, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai, worship Yahweh. So he told him to worship the Lord, Yahweh. For the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. And that's uh, uh, what, what the, that other scripture made me think about. So let me go into that. Let me see. And if you go here in the blue letter, in um, the word, we go into word, the word worship, and that goes into also to bowing down. It goes to proskineo in the Greek, to kiss uh, the hand to or towards one in token of reverence. You know, um, in the New Testament, by kneeling or uh, prostration to do homage to one or make obeisance, whether in order to express respect or make supplication. And also goes into uh, you know use of uh, use of homage shown to men and being uh, beings of superior rank, you know. So here it goes into like high priests, heavenly father to the heavenly father to Yahweh Shai to heavenly beings to demons, and you shouldn't be doing that to the uh, you know. The scriptures do talk about you know you bow your head to uh, uh, towards great men and like a sign of respect. But you ain't going to worship them like uh, you worship Yahweh, Basham Yahweh Shai. And you should not be doing that to, uh, you know, any heavenly being, you know, like an angel or a demon, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, it's funny how they described it, like, like, um, 
like a meaning to kiss like a dog licks his master's hand, you know. But um, I don't do reference to adored worship. So let me uh, go on and go to the word fellow servant, which is going to Sindolos. Well, Sindolos is a fellow ser a servant, one who serves the same master with another. You see, I'm that fellow servant. Here also in C, a colleague of one who is Yahweh Shai's servant in publishing the gospel, or in D, of one who with others acknowledges the same Lord, Yahweh Shai, and obeys his commandments. You see that? Yeah, of angels as the fellow servants of uh, you know, the so-called Christians. Because, you know, they bring messengers. Uh, we are, uh, like even the prophets were called uh, angel. And sometimes what well, an angel means just means messenger. You know, so. But you have actually angels that the Lord sends to, you know, proclaim. Um, like with Ezra's, like with John, you know. it's it, it, You can go through the scriptures and have multiple uh, um Angels coming towards uh, people, even with our forefather Jacob, you know. So after and after he re then he wrestled him later, also. So and his name was changed into Israel, but don't want to sidetrack too much. So let me get back into here testimony. You see. It goes into materia, and this is the same word that I went in. You know, so it goes into testifying, the office committed to the prophets of testifying concerning future events, because that's the spirit of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, man. With, uh, uh, what one testifies, testimony, i.e., before a judge, you can't testify if you don't have testicles. The spirit of the Lord, you know, the, the flock of my pasture are men. The Lord sent out, sends out his servants, the prophets, males, you know, with male genitalia, man, a man is, uh, you know, uh, the one that, or the ones that are going out, you know? You see, it goes into the word that I was reading before. So, let me go back. We go into the book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 26, concerning the shame. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he shall come in his, uh, when he shall come in his own glory, and in his fathers, that shows you also that Yahweh and Yahweh Shai are two separate uh, beings. You see that? And of the holy angels. You see that? So, let me go into some precepts. If you go to the cross references, didn't really have this plan, but Yahweh oh. Zahm will make uh, another video concerning the holy calling but um because i don't want to make it too long matthew 10 and 32 whosoever therefore shall confess me before men him will i confess also before my father which is in heaven so if you are ashamed then the lord won't mention you but whosoever shall deny me before men him also him will i also deny before my father which is in heaven you see that? Mark 8 and 38. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation. Because this, these words, you know, look at the world, man. Pieces of dung are ruling. The uh, sodomites are everywhere, man. And of different nations, man. You know, you see the people uh, from Eritrea in dresses or being sodomites openly, you know. Uh, you see uh, so-called Chinese people, you know, walking out there. So Cush and and Moab, the, those are their biblical nationalities, are just out there openly being sodomite, wearing dresses. I saw I saw two so-called Chinese people, one short with stockings on, and then later on in the other part of the city, tall. Like almost like uh, two meters tall, 
with a, with a freaking dress on, man, walking next to a, a small female. All drunk of that Babylon juice, man. Asia has been partaking in that, that madness, man. So, Second Ezra speaks about that in chapter uh, 15, if I'm correct. So, um, whosoever, in Mark 8, 38, whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation. of So, you basically, <laughs> if you are ashamed of the word which is righteous because of a bunch of sodomites and a-holes out there, you know, think about what you're doing, man. Or your girlfriend. Oh, why are you out there, man? Shut up, man. You know, so... Of course, you need to be wise according to how you deal with uh, these, these females out there. But, hey, don't be... For me, I ain't dealing with, 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 with these... If you don't want me out there, if you don't... You know, of course, if you out... And you deal with someone that you, you know, you're not like serious, serious like that. Let me just say it like that. That's something else. But if it's becoming serious and, you know, you need to be open about what you're doing, man. That's that's what I did. And then you see if someone is, uh, you know, will respect that or not. If she doesn't, then that's going to be a problem for the most likely for the rest of your relationship, man. But hey, what whatever you do about that, that's on you. But for me, if that's a problem, I'm 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 stepping, man. You know, if she's against the Lord, you know, which a lot of these females are, you know, if she doesn't have to necessarily believe in the Lord, but hey, don't hinder me, man. Especially nowadays, man. These, these these females are, man. But that's a whole other thing, man. Because the Apostle Paul spoke about that, man. You know, she's an unbeliever and she's pleased to dwell with you or you, or you pleased to dwell with her. She's cool. You know, she does what the female needs to be doing in the house and stuff like that. Hey, cool, man. But if she starts to block you, hey. That's a whole other story, man. But yeah. Um... Basically, uh, I'm going to keep it at this. Y'all are desired. Y'all were edified. And y'all are desired to the next one. Shalom. Sure